Africa is a continent full of legends, men and women who have greatly impacted the course of history, kings and queens, scientists, historians, and many who have placed Africa at the cradle of civilization. Welcome to the Legends of Africa series where we take a look into the rich and amazing world of our past through the lives of great men and women who we consider today our legends. Before we get into today's video, be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell. In today's video, we look at one of the most powerful Roman emperors to have ever lived. Now, I'm sure you have already created an image in your head about how he may have looked. Perhaps a white man with blonde hair with a lot of suntan? Well, if that's the case, you are wrong. Emperor Septimus Savas was the first African emperor and an African emperor historians have tried very hard to hide from you. Septimius Savas was born on April 11th in the year 145 AD in Tripolitania, now known as Libya. He came from a wealthy and distinguished background. His father, an obscure provincial ruler, held no major political status, but he had two cousins, Publius Septimius and Gaius Septimius, who served as consuls under the emperor Antonius Pius. If you aren't familiar with the term consul, it is an official appointed by a state to live in a foreign city and protect the state's citizens and interests, something like today's ambassadors. Septimius Savas was educated in Latin and Greek and learned to speak very well and was afforded the best education one could get at the time. His first trip to Rome was in the year 162 AD, where he sought a career in public service. Once there, he quickly rose up the ranks, but his great break came when his cousin Gaius Septimius was appointed proconsul of the African province. He eventually was made consul, a position of the highest honor in the year 190 AD. Even though it seems that all he was occupied with was work and rising up the ranks, his love life was also flourishing. In the year 175 AD, he married his first wife, Pasha Mashiana, who died 11 years later. Then, while serving as governor of Gaul in the year 187 AD, he married Julia Domna, who would have two sons with him. Life seemed to be going great for him, and he was even promoted to consul of the region of Upper Pannonia, what is now known as Germany and Austria. Shortly after this, his cousin Gaius Septimus was murdered. A year later, his successor, Publius Halvius Pertinax, was also murdered at the hands of his bodyguards, who then sold the title to the highest bidder. The Roman people did not appreciate this turn of events, mostly because they had an emperor who ruled them simply out of greed. The locals became so angry and demanded for a better leader. Septimus Savas rose to the occasion. He had a distinct advantage over the other rulers due to his proximity of his province to Rome. He took immediate action to secure his hold over the title of emperor. He started by promising his competition the title of Caesar, and then he declared his wife empress. As a leader, Septimus Savas was determined to improve the life of his people. He expanded on building projects, worked to provide opportunities to feed the poor and the hungry, and in the city of Libya, he expanded on infrastructure, adding a harbor, forum, and new streets. He was very popular with the Roman soldiers as he regularly promoted them. He was also the first emperor to station some of the imperial army in Italy. He realized that Rome needed a military central reserve with the capacity to be sent anywhere. In the year 193 AD, his soldiers proclaimed him emperor. Septimius Savas' reign was cut short when he fell ill in the year of 2011 AD. He was then succeeded by his sons, who were advised by his wife, Julia Domna. But there's a problem. His statue fails to show his dark color of skin, his tight hair curls, and his African features. Perhaps in a way to hide the fact that he was an, of African heritage? Who knows? It's also unfortunate that this is not taught in schools. When we are being taught about the mighty Roman Empire, it is rarely mentioned that one of the greatest Roman emperors was an African man. Why do you think this is so? Why try to bury a great man just because it doesn't fit some society's white supremacy tendencies? Let us discuss in the comments below. Thank you for watching. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do so and hit the notification bell so you can be alerted once we upload a video. 
If you've enjoyed today's video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Also, make sure to watch our other videos which celebrate our Mama Africa. It's been me, Linda from Tuna Travel. Be sure to check out my YouTube channel. Until the next video, stay safe and I'll see you then. And remember, Africa is watching.